Hey everybody, welcome to the final unit of the year. We're actually going to you know, conclude everything with a novel called Animal Farm. Um, so that's actually what I plan to talk about today. At this point in time, you should have reviewed the handout that I had posted regarding the Russian Revolution. And of course, um, there's a PowerPoint posted about political uh, terms and concepts. It's good to familiarize yourself with that because those things have everything to do with the reason why this book was even created. So. Um, in chapter one, I have a couple of things. I'm getting my notes out here and that's what I'll be referencing. Um, you may want to have your PDF pulled up so you can follow along. I do go in order for the most part. Um, but in the very beginning of chapter one, we're introduced to a variety of characters on um, Animal Farm, okay? It's really important to remember the characteristics since they have everything to do with the rest of the story and they actually go beyond the story and sort of represent um, different people during the Ref Russian, Re Russian Revolution. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about some of those characters today. The first one that we see is Mr. Jones, and we know that he is the owner of Manor Farm, so he runs the place. Um, but we kind of gather that he's not really a very good uh, a farmer. Actually, he's a drunkard, and he's pretty neglectful of the animals, and um, he's even somewhat violent at times. A couple of things to sort of illustrate his behavior is really when you see, um, you look at page 25, and he's too drunk to shut the pop holes in the hen houses. He's, you know, drawing himself one last glass of beer before he pops into bed. Um, you know, those sorts of things. So anyway, we do have uh, the, the main guy, the owner, and then we're also introduced to a pig named Old Major. You know, he seems to be sort of the leader of the animals on the farm. He's kind of like that wise old elder that everyone goes to for advice. Um, and we're going to talk actually a lot more about Old Major once I get through the rest of these characters. Um, other characters to kind of mention here would be Bluebell, Jesse, and Pincher, and I refer to them all together because they're all dogs, um, and they seem to associate most of the time with the pigs. Uh, you'll have to remember that for later. Um, we also have two cart horses, Boxer and Clover. Uh, Clover is described as this sort of motherly figure. She kind of takes everyone under her hoof, if you will, instead of her wing. Um, it's just very nurturing. And then we have um, Boxer, which is the other cart horse. He's the larger, stronger one, um, but he's also described as having this like stupid appearance and he's not a first rate. So good, strong worker, just not intelligent. Um, we also have uh, a donkey on the farm named Benjamin. He's the oldest animal, and uh, kind of what from what we gather, he's sort of grouchy and pessimistic, okay? Um, and then finally, we have uh, Molly, which is a foolish, pretty white mare. She's very dainty. Um, what's kind of significant about her is that she's mostly concerned with the finer things uh, in life, like sugar, um, things that really don't matter. They're wants and not necessarily needs. So those are the characters um, that that we see at first there are more that will be introduced to at a later time um, the rest of the chapter deals with old major telling the animals about a dream that he had had recently and he wants to kind of discuss his feelings in relation to the farm so what is the general gist of his speech well here it goes um you know according to old major he believes that they live a pretty miserable life you know they're um not happy they're not free by any means and they're basically slaves to farmer jones and, you know, he believes that Farmer Jones, or just man as a whole, they're blame to blame for the conditions that these animals are experiencing. Um, and he questions why these animals choose to live and support, um, you know, Mr. Jones. He takes everything that they produce and he only gives them what they, uh, the bare minimum that they need in order to survive, you know. Uh, he also points out that they have a bitter fate and that eventually everybody will be slaughtered when they no longer serve a purpose for the farmer. Um, finally, he warns them that, you know, they shouldn't be fooled by man saying that they have uh, the animal's best interests at heart. They really don't. And that's, again, illustrated through Mr. Jones and his treatment of the animals. Um, then he shifts over and kind of addresses the animals as comrades, which is a very important term. You'll see this throughout the rest of the play. Um, what a comrade is, is just a friend. It's someone that you are familiar with, okay? And uh, so he, he, by calling them comrades, it makes him uh, connect with them and, and tells them that they should eventually band together and revolt against Farmer Jones. You know, uh, so man is the enemy. Man is tyrannical. We must overthrow man. Um, he does say that a, re a rebellion is bound to happen. It's inevitable. Um, he doesn't know when, but when it does, he warns them about certain things that, um, you know, 
can cause the new system to collapse. He tells them that animals should never resemble the very things that they are against, um, which would be man and his vices. So for instance, they shouldn't smoke, they shouldn't drink, they shouldn't wear clothes, they can't sleep in beds, they shouldn't be t touching money or engaging in trade. They should especially not tyrannize over their own kind. Okay, so they can't, they shouldn't be turning against each other and treating each other poorly. So he says that when you do rebel, watch out for these things because it will cause your downfall. Um, and then he finally concludes the whole meeting with a song that he remembers from his dream and from his early childhood. And the song becomes very, very important as the story progresses. Um, you know, my question to you is why? Uh, think about songs in our own world. Think about, um, you know, songs like an anthem, a national anthem. So ours is Star Spangled Banner. Think about fight songs that we have when we're for our school. Um, what they do is they stir up emotions, they unite people, they um, make people feel like they're all together in this and that they wanna do the best that they can in order to preserve, um, you know, the good things in life. So this song that he sings to them does stir up emotions in the animals regarding re the rebellion. And, uh, and it creates this sort of thirst for freedom. Um, it unites them, again, is what I, I want to say. Um, you know, we even have, look at how many animals ended up participating in, in the song after a few rounds. They all started singing it. Um, so it really gets them all, you know, hyped up and wanting to, to go ahead and take action. And, uh, you know, again, music, songs, anything that we deal with, you know, they, they create a lot of emotions. We get hyped up in certain songs. I know some people do walkout songs when it comes to baseball. Um, you know, we work out, we feel a little more hyped up to work out when we listen to music. Um, sometimes songs can even cause other emotions like sadness. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to, sh to talk to you about the power of, of music and song. Um, another thing that I also wanted to point out just about Old Major's speech as a whole is that his speech sort of mimics the speech that was given by Vladimir Lenin in March of, uh, of 1919. Uh, in that time, Vladimir's mission was to convince the Bolsheviks to revolt against uh, Tsar Nicholas II. So uh, a lot of similarities there. And if you want to um, actually take a look at that and analyze it, you, you certainly can to see those parallels. Um, finally, the last thing that I want to say at the end of uh, chapter one is just to pay attention uh, into the way in which the animals were positioned around the platform. Notice on the platform we have a pig and then um, who is above everybody else. And then we have um, pigs and dogs were seated immediately in front of the platform and everybody else fell behind. So this is, I think, um, some foreshadowing as to how this, the structure of the new system will be once they decide to rebel and if they are in fact successful in doing so. So just remember that um, for a later date, okay? Um, hopefully this helps. Email me with any questions that you have and uh, happy reading. See ya.